guitar practice session 10, 18, 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on and then give a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help to generate a routine, help me to verbalize what I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind better, possibly providing information to others working on similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to try to learn the things that I'm trying to be learning here. I do think that presenting things is useful to try to learn them even if no one else is listening because it forces us to kind of present things in a way and verbalize them that we wouldn't do otherwise. Therefore, if anybody else wants to take some of these resources and do their own practice sessions, don't worry about plagiarism or anything. I'll try to provide the worksheets and whatnot. You can do whatever you want with uh, the worksheets. However, they will be orientated possibly a little bit different than you're used to from the perspective of behind the guitar playing the guitar so that if you imprinted the guitar on the screen, we have the top string on top, top to bottom, left to right from the perspective of playing behind the guitar. I'm going to flip my guitar around as well so it looks like I'm left-handed so that once again everything's kind of going the same way from your perspective from uh, behind the guitar. So this time what I'm going to be looking at is trying to as systematically as possible think about all the different ways that we can play a fifth and a third because when we make our basic chord constructions we're usually looking at triad chords, major triads, minor triads, they have a one, three, five within them. The 1 and the 5 would be the same under a major or minor construction. It's the 3rd that's going to differ either a major 3rd or a minor 3rd. So in prior days, I've been working on basically thinking of all the different ways we can play a triad, which is useful, but it actually gets quite complex even with only 3 notes, especially if you're like in the middle of the guitar here because uh, there's a lot of different combinations, even with just three three notes when you start to invert and so on and so forth. So I thought it might be good now to think about systematically, uh, if I choose any note on the guitar, uh, can I find every fifth and every third around that note? So I'm going to do that by basically picking some note where I build a major or minor in the middle of the guitar, with the idea that no matter what note I pick, the relative major and minor will be the same relative distance away because the guitar has that relative position similar to an Excel sheet. So, and that, that's a little bit different if I get to the, this part on the end of the neck because, of course, you run into the, to the wall here, to the nut, and you run out of real estate at the top. But in general, uh, the, the system would work. So I'm going to pick a note in the middle of the guitar, on the major side and then look at each individual string. So I don't have to pick every note on the guitar. I'm going to pick some note on each string somewhere in the middle of the guitar for the majors and the minors. And that same string position should work relative to every other major or minor construction on any other, on, on, on any other note on that string would be the idea. So if I pick this first one, like the C right here, I can pick out all of the, the, uh, the fifths and all of the thirds, and I can do it systematically on each string. I could say, okay, if I'm looking at that C, what's the fifth of this string, uh, and what's the, what's the third of this string? What's the third on the next string down? What's the third on the next string down? What's the third on the next string down? Remembering that there's only one third and one fifth on each string between an octave, which is fret 0 through fret 12. So I should be able to locate on each string where that is. I might not be able to reach it with my finger, but I want to be able to know where it is on each string it would be the general idea. And once I have an idea of where those are, then I can build my chords a little bit more easily. Now, it's a little bit easier to do that at the top because if I go like down to this C, for example, then I have to go above it, which means... If I'm counting my strings, I've got to count up and look at the distance between these two strings. Usually I count from like this E down this way. Uh, so that would be the distance between the two strings. And that's where my inversions come into play. So, so I'll get into the inversions and counting the strings from the bottom up and why that's a useful skill to have if you didn't have your 
fretboard, if I didn't have my colored fretboard here and I'm just trying to count up on the fretboard and give some verification in my mind, where are all the relative positions? Because now we know the distances to some degree and we'll practice in particular the fifths and the thirds here. Now later on, what I would like to do is do the same thing then for the seven, the nine, the 11, and the 13 with regards to the major key. And then think about when the 7, 9, 11, and 13 distances differ. When is it going to be a major distance versus like a minor distance you might think of it as. But it's not always just going to be when you're in a major mode or minor mode. That will be told to us basically by the modes that we are, that we're in. So once I know the, the 1, 3, 5, then I'm thinking we learn the shapes specific to the major key 7, 9, 11, and 13 so that I can add those to our triad as easy as possible on, a, on all of the major chords in the Ionian mode, and then possibly go to the minor mode, look at the minor 7, 9, 11, and 13, and then look at the other uh, modes that will give us one distinctive interval difference related with relation to the related major or the minor. And that'll help us possibly to, to think about what's actually going on when we build some of the more complex chords with uh, four more than three notes, right? Where we're adding more, when we're adding a seven, nine, 11, and a 13. When do we do that? Does it still fit in the key? When does it fit in the key? When doesn't it fit in the key? That all is easier to see, I think, if we have an idea of what it means to be the related modes and think of the chord constructions as basically a mode. I'm playing a, a modal chord, right? I'm playing the related, mixolydian modal chord all right so that's going to be the general idea i tell a joke in there somewhere which has some politics in it so if you don't like politics or anything you might want to uh skip that one to not i don't want to anger people unnecessarily but i thought it was funny but maybe it was tasteless so that's that today i want to work on being able to find every relative third and every relative fifth no matter what note we happen to be on within the fretboard which of course would help us to create triad chords which are made up of the one three five we'll work on this both with major triads and minor triads which have the same fifth within them so the fifth will be kind of easy because it's same for the major and minor triads but have a different third the major third being a four note away major third, the minor third being a three note away minor third. Now, the way I can possibly systematically do this is the way I'm thinking to systematically do this or try to systematically do this is to pick a note that's within the key we're in. We're going to be working in this key of C in related modes and then just pick a one that makes a major chord, which will have a major triad related to it on each string. So if I choose the C, for example, and I look at all the relative positions to get a third and a fifth, then I should be able to go to any other note and I should be able to find the same relationships between thirds and fifths. This B, of course, isn't in the key of C, but if I switch to the key of B, then I'm gonna have the same relative positions for the third of fifth, thirds and fifths related to that B, right? Because everything is shiftable on the guitar. And so then I'll do the same thing for the an, an A in our case, or choose one that has a minor chord construction and find all the thirds and fifths. The only thing that will be different are the fifth or the thirds in that case. And then I'll do that for each, each uh, string, all of six strings. And once we do that, if I was able to actually memorize all of those positions, then I should be able to pick every note on the guitar and find all of the relative positions to that note because it's all going to be the same except of course we have some issues where that we're for back at the nut here we can't go past the nut of course so we're gonna have a restriction and open strings allow us to to make relative uh thirds and fifths that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do depending on the note that you're in because those happen to be the open strings and if i go up on the top of the guitar we're going to run out of real estate in a similar fa fashion up there but for the most part I think we should be able to, to, to figure that out or that could be a project that's possible to do. And once we do that, then I'm thinking we continue that project and say, well, what if we look at the seven, the nine, the 13 and 11 for a major seven, 
And then we try to think about all of the modes that will be have a different 7, 9, 11, and 13 because the different modes are going to tell us where the distinctive intervals are. But we'll start off with, of course, the triads and see how well we, we have how well I have those down. So most of so we've been I've been working on the the thirds and the fifths for chord constructions using a lean forward shape and a lean back shape. But when we get to like the more exotic ones, they can be difficult to find. So what's the systematic way I can do this? Remember that there's only one note of each note on the strings because it's kind of like a piano that goes through one octave on one string. So you've got all of the notes from here to here on this guitar, the, the, the double dots. So that means that, that there's only one opportunity within that stretch to have each of the a third and a fifth. So I just need, so I could, I should be able to say on each string relative to any position, where's the third or the fifth? I might not be able to reach it. It might be out of reach. This third might be out of reach, but I should be able to say, there it is. That's where it is, right? So let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to say, if I'm on this C, let's start with this C with a major and I'm in the, the major key because that'll make it, that'll make it easy for me to see this triad. I have it color coded here. So the one is a green, the three is red, and the five is yellow to help us out a little bit. It's kind of cheating, but <laughs> so then we have, if I look for the thirds, obviously the main third is right here. Now that's a four note away, major third. How do I know it's four notes away? I'm going to do the counting because I think that's going to help us on the instances where we don't know where it is. So if I'm up here, five notes between the string, five minus one is four. So that one is the one I should know. That's like the first one, I think. I should probably start on the top string. And you could say, well, I'm on the top string. That's why I'm not starting there by nature, because I can't build a chord off it. But I can arpeggiate off of it. So I could say, where's the third on the top string? Well, it's out here on the 12. So it's out on the 12. That's good to know. Because I, I can arpeggiate that. Cool. Where's the third on the next string down? It's on, it's right behind it, which is the normal position, unless I'm in the kink in the tuning. And then the more abstract one that most of us probably don't know, like just by heart, is this one. Where's the third on this string? It's way back here on the second. Now I can't, there's no way I'm going to reach that, but I can identify that in my mind and say, okay, well, the, the third is going to be like way back there. And so I just know where it is. It's out of my reach, but I could say, okay, I know where that is. That's out of my range to make a chord from. What about the third on, on the G string? That's the one that's in my bar chord. That's the one that most of us do it on a bar chord like this, but we probably, we might not know all the positions. This is a, a one, five, one, three. So the three is down there. That's useful to know. So if I just want that third to create something in, or just, I get a third like that, or I can double up the thirds. Maybe grab a, grab something here for the heck of it. I don't know. Anyway, so where's the third on the next string? It's down here. That's probably one that we don't really know by heart as much. So by the way, if I counted up this third, how would I know, how would I know this is a third by counting it? I'd say, well, that's going to be five, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. So it's four notes away. This third is five, 10, 15, 16 minus 12 notes is six minus two is four. This, and then we have a third back here. If I didn't know where that was, I could count up, I could be like, and I don't know, I wouldn't know where it was if it wasn't color coded, I'm cheating. Five, 10, 15, and then 20 because of the kink of the tooting up here. 19, 18, 17, 16. So, so now if I didn't know where it was, how could I count that up a little bit more easily? Because I could say 16 minus 12 is six uh, minus two is four. But I might say, well, this is five, 10, 15, 20. Or I could say 5, 10, 15. I'm already past 12. So maybe right here I say 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2 it gives me 3. So then I, I could bring this back down to 3 maybe and then plus 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
eight, seven, six, five, four. So it's four notes away. I'm just trying to find a way I can count it up. And I'm not a master at count. I'm like, if, if I did this like a few months ago, I would be mind boggled trying to count that up to what I just did right there. So it takes some practice to like say, okay, but once you do it a few times, you can count it up and then you can kind of figure out where it's at. And then I can do that on the, on the guitar. But anyways, there's the five, so I could say it's back there. So that could possibly be useful if I was trying to play something, you know, play play like a weird, more weird kind of chord. Like I could bar this off, right, and play it. Anyways, but so that's good to know. And then where's the E down here? Again, I could, I might say, how can I count that up if I didn't know where it was? Well, one way I can say that E is going to be the same as on the top one, right? So, so if I was here, it's right there. So therefore, it's going to be the same on the bottom string. So that's probably the easiest way to attack the bottom string is say it's going to be the same down there as it is up top. And some people do it the other way because a lot of people actually work, or not a lot of, I don't know how many people, but a lot of people actually work from the bottom. And that might be because, be because they're working with tablature that names this is the one. Or on an electric guitar, sometimes people like working down here more because the higher register doesn't overwhelm like a singer's voice or something like that. So that so some people might know this register, of course, better, in which case the top string would be the one that would be like this string down here. But I usually go from the top down because I learned the shape from the top down. So I'm the top, I'm a top down as a default person, uh, <laughs> I guess. Uh, okay, so then let's see what else we got here. Now let's try to figure out the fifth. So if I pick up the fifth, most of us first know the fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth, power chord. How do I, whoops, that's the wrong notes. So power chords, how do I know it's seven notes away? Because it's five, six, seven. So that, so there's the fifth there. Where's the fifth, by the way, on the top string? I have one back here. So the fifth would be back at that G, which is quite a reach. And that would be because it would be, if I was on, it would, if I'm going backwards, it'd be one, two, three, four, five. It'd be five down, one, two, three, four, five which means that 12 minus five, which would be, uh, 12 minus five would be a seven little way perfect fifth. Okay, so that makes sense. And then what about the next string down? Where's the fifth? Well, I, I know this one, and a lot of people probably know this one because this is our lean back shape, which would be like a G shape. Looks like that. So the fifth is right there. So that's useful to know. How do I, how, how could I get there? I could say, okay, that would be, five, 10, nine, eight, seven. So that makes sense. What about the next string? Next string, we have one up here. So that's gonna be boom, boom. That's reachable, at least on the higher octaves. So how do I know that's a fifth? Because if I didn't know where that was, I could say, okay, it's five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 minus 12 is basically nine minus two, which is seven. An easier way to count that up if I didn't know where that was would be to say this is five, 10, 15, and take that 15 minus 12, five minus two is three, and I've got to get up to seven. So I'm not gonna go left, I'm gonna go right on that three, four, five, six, seven. So I can kind of, hunt it out that way uh and so there is that okay and then the next one is going to be down here now this one we probably know of again in our chord because that's in our bar chord because you have the one five one uh three and then there's another five down here and a one so we have the five down here i could just play it like that if i could pick it <laughs> And then let's count that up. It would be five, 10. So I know there's gonna, like, I'm thinking there's gotta be one on this string. Where is it? What if I didn't know? I'd go five, 10, 15. And now let's convert that down to something within 12 notes. So 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which is three. 
and then I'd go three plus five because of the kink in the tuning would be eight. I want seven, so I'm not going to go to the right because that would go to nine. I have to go back to get me to seven. So that's how I can kind of count it up, right? And then I can say, okay, where's the one on the next string? I can see it's back here on the three. I probably can't reach that. That would be quite a reach. I could totally do it. Very practical position. Psych. It's probably not practical. But I probably know that, like, because, again, the top one is the G up here, so there's the G down there. Psych. Does anyone say psych anymore? Come on. Psych. <laughs> Oh uh, God, loser! All right, what am I gonna do? Let's go to the let's go to the A then. Uh, do the same thing here. So now, now if I went to the A, all the fifths are gonna be relatively positioned the same. So since we just did the fifth, let's take a look at that. We've got the fifth uh, on uh, the same note would be back. It's behind you can't really see it because we hit the nut up here but uh it would be well wait a sec i'm on the fifth is an e yeah no i can't see it it's right there dude dude you're messing me up so it's the e back to here or you can say e up to here where it repeats again okay and then where's the fifth on the next string? It's going to be, of course, our, our power chord. Do the fifth first because they're the same. We just did that. So that's seven note away. Where's the fifth on the next string? It's the same distance. But this time, see, it's, it's our same shape, but now it's a minor shape. The third is different, but the fifth, same. And then where's the fifth on the next? And by the way, that's five. 10, 9, 8, 7, so that makes sense. Where's the fifth on the next string? That's the one that's up here. And so that's at the 9 and the G. Is that right? Let me count that up. So that one's probably, that's somewhat exotic to me. So if I didn't know that one, I'd be like 5, 10, 15, and then let's bring it down. 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2 is 3. And then I need to go up to 7. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Boom. And then I have the one down here on the next string, which is part of my bar chord, which now looks like that. So it would be if I did that bar chord on the minor bar chord, it would be the 1, 3, 1. Whoops, I'm sorry. 1, 5, 1, 3. There's another 5. So if I counted that up, if I didn't know where it was, I'd be like 5, 10, 15, and then bring it down. So I'm going to say 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, which is 3. And 3 plus 5 is 5, 6, 7, 8. I need to go down to 7. Therefore, I go to the left, and there it is. And then we have the E up here again for the last one. All right, let's go to the minors. The minors are going to be different. I mean, sorry, the thirds are going to be different. So we have the third back here. So the first third I would think about on the top string. Where's the third on the top string? Well, it's on, it's on, uh, there it is. Instead of four notes away, it's three notes away. So when I was on this C, I was going up to here, right, four notes. But now it's only three notes up because it's a three note away minor third instead of a four note away perfect third. We're looking at this interval. All right, where's the third on the next string? Well, instead of being right here, as it was with the C, right behind, it's back one. So it's going to go boom, boom. If I count it out, it's going to be five, four, three. Three note away, minor third. What about on the next string? Well, that's going to be one I may not be as familiar with. So if I counted that out, it would be five, ten, uh, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It'd be 5, 10, 11, 12. And then let's bring that down. 12 minus 12 is 0 because there's another A, right? That makes sense. And then 1, 2, 3. Okay, I get it. So then I'm going to say here from here to here. I can get there. 
bit of a reach. I ain't gonna be doing much else. If I reach that, I can put my other finger here, possibly. Oh, there's a, I have a, that's actually a chord. <laughs> it's a stretchy way to play. But I might, but that's kind of cool. One, five, three. Put that in the repertoire. All right, so then we're going to say the next one on this string. It's right here. That's part of my bar chord again, which would be one, five, one, three. So, if, so how would I count that? It would be five, 10, 15, 15 minus 12, five minus two is five, four, three. Makes sense. And then back here, we've got this one, which I probably wouldn't really know but it's quite a stretch doable though don't know why I'd want to grab that one could I do anything else while grabbing that I could pick up another third here or something here play the open strings eh? I don't know if that's usable but there it is if I count it up it'd be 5 10 15 and then I'm going to say 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, 5, 4, 3. And then 3 plus 5, 5, 6, 7, 8. I need to go down to 4, so I'm not going to go to the right. I'm going to go back. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Three note away, minor third. And then the top string is the same, again, as up here. So it's going to be boom, boom. I could reach that, which is just... So I could do like a bar chord, maybe. Not really. That C on top for some reason. Why I would want to do that? I don't know. But there's that. Okay. Let's go to the next string down. Let's go to a major. Where's a major on this string? I got a C here. Let's go to the F. F is the Lydian. Let's go to the Lydian to figure that one out. It's going to be a major chord construction. We're looking here for the major third. Okay, so now let's just do that. Let's get these out of here because I'm not working on those. Let's go to this F up here. So if I'm on that string, so now if I'm on this string, I could say where's, let's do the thirds again. Where's the third above it? The third above it on this string is right there. Is that right? No, it's here. So, so how do I know that's a third? Now here's where it gets a little bit more wonky because I'm going above it. So if I didn't know where that one was, just by position, I could say, well, I need a four note away major third. 12 minus four is eight. So from this note back, I, it needs to be an eight note away minor uh, six. So, so, right, and so that, and so, the question would be what note on this string, if I measure from this string to this string, would be an eight note away, minor six away. Now, if I wanted to count it up, if I didn't know that position, I know that it's eight notes away going, that's gonna be, there's eight notes between this note and this note, right? So, so I'm gonna say, okay, what if I count it up? I would, I would say this is, I would call it negative five because I'm going backwards, negative five, and then this would be going still up in the negatives of negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight. There's eight. And then 12 minus eight is four. So that's how I can count it up, right? And so that, and, and, and obviously I know that in a circle, that, that means there's eight notes between these two. But if I went from this F right here and I counted up, I'd say uh, that would be, that'd be one, two, three, four. It's four notes away. So going from here to here is eight notes away. Going from here to here is four notes away because it's a circle. So I have that one. Okay, and then what about on this string, the string that it's on, I can't play it at the same time, but I can arpeggiate, which is in the same position. All right, it's, so that's four notes away for a major. It would be three for a minor third. And then I have this one which is going to be my normal position, which is probably the first one that comes to mind. I have the third right behind it, which is just going to be, I can count that out, that would be five minus one is four. And then I have this one, which I probably don't know. If I didn't know where it was, I would say this is five, 
this is 10, and then I need to get down to four, so I have to go left, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. So there it is back there. I can't reach it though, physically. So uh, then I'm gonna go from, to the next string, I've got this one, and that one I might know of because of my, because I would make a lean forward A-shaped bar chord, which is a, which would give me a one, five, one, if I can play it, one, three. So that's gonna give me that, and, and but I can just see it right there. And how do I how do I know? Wait a sec, is that it? That's right here. One, five, one, three. Okay, counting that up, it would be five, ten, fifteen. Fifteen minus twelve would be uh, two plus one gives me a three note away. All right, and then down here I've got. The, the same A that I figured was up here on the 12, therefore that same one is going to be down here, which is reachable, although maybe not the most practical thing to be looking for oftentimes unless you're doing something weird. We might do something on that. So then let's go with the fifths. What about the fifths? Uh, we have the fifth above it. So the fifth above it, it's usually easy to find the fifth above because it's right above. So the, the third is a little bit harder to, to remember because it changes from the major and the minor, but whether you're on the major or the minor, the fifth is usually right above it unless you're in the kink and the tuning. I can count that because I could say, okay, uh, I need a fifth. So what's the inverse? The inverse is a fifth is seven notes away, seven note away, perfect fifth uh, here. Well, I can't see it here because, but seven note away. Well, there it is. Seven note away, perfect fifth. Inverse would be twelve minus seven, which would be a five note away, perfect fourth. So then the distance between this note and this note, this string and this string, would be five notes. So if I was to count down, the distance is five. So it has to be here. So from C to F would be a five note away, perfect uh, fourth. Therefore, from F to C is a seven note away, perfect fifth. All right, on this one, on this string, the fifth is behind it, like we've seen before, and we have to go back five notes, same rationale, five notes back, uh, because going from C to F would be a five note away, perfect fourth, therefore going from F to C is a seven note away, perfect fifth. And then on the next string, we have this one, which again, I probably wouldn't know by I probably wouldn't know unless I counted it out. How could I count it out? Well, it's below. It'd be five. Uh, wait, that's an F. What am I doing? That's not right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I wouldn't know it because I would know it because that's the wrong one. And this would be my favorite one, which is <laughs> what everyone knows. The power chord where you just like, and you want to just jam on it. So that's going to be the, the main one, actually. Five, six, seven, idiot. Okay. I'm going to stop calling myself an idiot. Yeah, you should stop calling your only an idiot would call themselves an idiot. Like, okay, I get it. I'm not going to do that anymore. Let's do this. This one is going to be, uh, so if I didn't know that one, it would be five, 10, nine, eight, seven. So that's the same fifth by the way, because here's my lean back kind of C chord. And then if I let that go, there's my fifth. Same uh, distance. Let's do the fifth on the next string, which is way back here, which if I didn't know what that was, it'd be 5, 10, 15. 15 minus 12 is going to be 5, 6, 7. Uh, 15 minus 12 is 5, 4, 3. And... I need to get back what is going on here. Uh, it would be 5, 10, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Okay, that works. But there's no way in heck I'm going to be reaching that. 
So then I've, but then I've got this one down here, which would be in my, I probably know because it's in my bar chord, if I was to play the, the bar chord like properly, but normally we can't because we can't really lift our finger up to, re to release that one unless you played it like this. But that's like ridiculous. Does anyone really do that? I guess you could. But anyways, it's at the bottom and that's the same one that it's the same as up the top. Okay, so that's that one. So did I do the thirds? I did the thirds. Let's go to a minor on this string like the D. That's in the Dorian. Let's go to the Dorian. All right, let's do a joke first. It's joke time. Uh, let me put my thing on the right spot before I do my joke. All right, this is kind of, it's got some politics in this one, so it might annoy people. Uh, so beware. You can fast forward it. Okay. You, you know, ever since, ever since the, the deconstructivists, radicals, started making up new words and changing changing the definitions of long established ones to the point where the, po the like the post tower of babel problems seems like just a minor communication snafu compared to the current circumstances it's like pardon me sir the proper pronunciation is chowter not chowter or chow the proper pronunciation is not chowder it's chowter well, therefore, you certainly would never lose your temper with something as trivial as the pronunciation of chowder. That's chowder! Chowder! I'll kill you! I'll kill all of you! Especially those of you in the jury! I don't know, it's a, but, but I've, been think, I've been thinking about some of our English phrases since this, since this has been happening. Uh, like, for example, F that crap. Or sometimes you could say screw that crap or hump that crap, for example different ways to say basically the same saying which is which is you got to admit it's kind of a strange phrase it's a strange phrase because i mean is it is it even possible is it physically possible to hump to hump crap i mean you you, you have you have to be pretty crap faced to try humping crap you know i mean honestly if you're like well it's been a it's been a tough night i'm really horny and the, and the only way you can think to solve the problem is humping crap. That's not good. You're, you're, if that's the case, your mind has completely gone at that point, you know? Like, I doubt that's even been done by, like, Joe Biden, for crying out loud. Not even, he's not, I mean, he comes close. But he stops after sniffing the crap's hair, you know? That's right. He only hits on the hairy crap which is kind of gross in and of itself because it's like, where the heck did that hair come from on the crap? Although there are rumors uh, that, that an act like that was observed on the infamous laptop, but we don't want to get into those because we'll get canceled. Seriously, though, how, how, do you, how do you come up with this kind of phrase? I mean, I mean even in just the realm of, of, of inanimate objects, there's got to be an inan inanimate number, an, an infinite number of things higher on the list than crap. You know, it's strange. And I don't know, maybe, maybe we should be rethinking some of our sayings. However, I, I, I think we should do so in an open, transparent, and constructive way. Not in a manipulative, power-driven, deconstructivist one. And that, of course, means that we need... We, we need new people. We need new people at the discussion table because, and let me be clear, the current ones suck. By the way, did you, did you see that guy who, who he was a podcaster that president Trump did a podcast with where the, where the, where the, where the media picked some random thing like they always do that like the, the, the mainstream of sewage media picked some random thing and started calling you know, said it was a racist dog whistle or, the, you know, the same routine or whatever. And the podcaster, the podcaster responded by like, by posting a fart at them or something like that. I, I, I honestly, that's not, that's the kind of response that, that these controversy, controversy constructors out of nothing would get in a healthy country. You know, questions, you know, questions like that 
should they shouldn't even be part of the main discussion met with disdain and dismissal that's how it's done and i don't, I don't know who that guy is i i saw it on brett cooper i don't know, even know who they are but but that fart gave me hope that the country has not gone completely crazy even though some people clearly that are like in running it or have but that's okay whatever dude anyways all right let's get back to it we're going to the the d minor d minor all right all right all right let's get back to the d minor back to work dang it this isn't what do you think you're i don't need to work i'm a comedian and a rock star it's whatever dude you need to get you should get back to accounting for gods okay <laughs> Accounting's for losers. I'm a rock star. All right. Anyway, where's the, where's the the fifth? The, okay, the fifth over here. There's one right above it. Same thing. So we'll do this quickly because the fifth is the same relative position, and then there's a fifth here. From this D back to the A, which is the open. There's a fifth. Uh, our standard fifth, which is the same relative position power chord for the minor. There's a fifth back here, which is the same relative position for a lean back, this time being like a C minor. The third position changes, but the fifth is the same. So there's the fifth. We've got the fifth uh, up here, which is probably the one that is least noble or I wouldn't really that's quite a stretch and then we've got the fifth once again at the bottom which would be part of my bar chord if we did a bar like that for the minor which is like the major bar chord on the A shape but now I have an A minor shape drop in the third back so we've got a one five one three and there's the five again at the top which of course is the same as this one up top all right let's look at the thirds on the top string the third is back here now so if i looked at the rel over here it was back to this a which is one two th one two three four back now it's one two three f now it's one two three four it was one two three back from this f and now it's one, two, three, four back. That makes sense, because we flatten it. So it's this F, that's more of a reach for the minor. On the major, it's more doable. But it is still doable. All right. And then what if I go on to the same string? And by the way, if I counted that up, how would I count that? I'd say, well, uh, if I didn't know what it was, I'd say, well, I need a three note away uh, minor third. 12 minus 3 is 9, therefore the distance between these three no these two notes is 9. If I went up, I'd say negative 5, I need to keep going up negative, so it'd be negative 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's a, so from D, that means from F to D is a, is a 9 note away major 6, and so from D to F is a 3 note away minor 3rd. Makes perfect sense. And then if I go to this one on this string, it's just uh, three notes away, so three note away, like which I can only arpeggiate, and then the third behind it is is should be the one that we see as this would be the major third, the minor dropping it back. So boom boom, and then if I counted that out, it would be five four three, five four three, and then this one up here probably a least lesser known one. If I didn't know where it was, I'd say five ten and then 10, 11, 12, and that brings me back to zero, because that's the octave, 12 minus 12, one, two, three. So there's an F way the heck up here on the 10, and the 10 and here. Probably not the most practical one, but I see where it's at. I see how it's working. 
And then we have an F down here, which if I count that up would be 5, 10, 15, 15 minus 12, 12 minus 2 uh, is 3, 3 not away. Mm -hmm. So that would be part of my shape for my bar shape where I would have this shape, which would be an A bar shape, 5, this would be the 1, 5, 1, 3. And then we've got then on this string, we've got back here on the 1, which is almost reachable which is of course the same as the top string. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's go, let's say we go to the next string down. I'm gonna look for maybe, let's look at the G here because that's nice and right in the middle. That's the, the mixolydian. Let's go to the good old mixolydian. We got the G right in the middle. Right in the middle, just like Rocky, that's Rocky's trainer said, hit the one. I see three of them out there. Hit the one in the middle. And it was good advice too, because then Rocky won after he started doing that. So then we're gonna say we need, let's go to the third, let's go to, to like the fifth is always the same. So we should be able to see, well, now let's, let's go to the third. <laughs> All right, let's go up to this third. So we're on a major third now. So major third, four note away, major third. So if I didn't know where it was, how would I do it? Well, it's gonna be a four note away major third, 12 minus four is eight. So the distance between this string and this string, I need to find a distance of eight notes. If I go up one, it would be five. I'm, I'd call it negative five, negative six. So I have to go left, sit negative six, negative seven, negative eight. Therefore, from here to this B there, from B to G is an eight note away uh, minor nine. And that means that from G to B is a four note away major third. Okay. And then if I go to the string above it, where's the B up here? If I didn't know, I'd say, well, that's negative five. I need to, I need to find eight note away from this distance between the strings. Five, negative five, negative 10. And then going to the right would be nine, eight. So it would be here, boom, boom. So from this B to the G would be an eight note away, minor third from G to B, it would be a four note away, I'm sorry, from P to G would be an eight note away, uh, minor six from G to B would be a four, a four note away, major third. All right, and then if I go to this, this string that I'm actually on, it would be right there, which would be a four notes away, which I can arpeggiate. If I go to the string under it, the one that probably comes to mind first, it's right up, right behind it. And that would be, of course, five notes here, minus one is four. The next one down, I have 12 up here. This one probably is easier to reach, less distance to that B. Although if it wasn't open, it's still somewhat possible to reach. Uh, if I didn't know where it was, I'd say it would be five, 10, and then I, I gotta get to four, so I'm gonna go left, nine, eight, seven, six, five, what is it, five, 10, because of the kink and the tuning, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. All right, and then the last one is gonna be down here, and that's gonna be part of what I envision on my bar chord, which would look like this, which is a D-shaped chord. So I'd say this is the one, three, five, and the five has a has is the same as the one up top. Okay, let's do the fifth. So the fifth right above it. So I'm always going to be building out the most useful ones are the ones closest to it most likely most of the time. So that's my proposition at least. So the one right above it is going to be always right above it unless it's in the kink of the tuning. Why? Because I need a seven note away perfect fifth. 12 minus 7 is 5, therefore from D to, to, to G right above it, you have a 5 note away perfect 4th. From G to D then, you've got a 7 note away perfect 5th. So that's cool. And then the one above that is over here. If I didn't know where that was, I'd say this was 5, negative 5, negative 10. I need to find 5 notes away, so I'm going to go to the right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Boom. So there's the D, so it'd be out here. That's pretty much a reach. Maybe 
maybe that would be useful because I could grab this one and that would give me like a something that would be an, a 13 if I grab that one or I could grab this one and that would give me a 7 that's kind of interesting way to play that anyway okay maybe there's something to that reach because that's playable let's go below there's my main one the main fifth power chord ah, power and that's going to be five six seven the one behind it is going to be back here that's my main lean back shape which is up a little bit because it's now crossed the kink in the tuning so here's my third here's my fifth the fifth is usually back here but now it's up because of the kink in the tuning and then that would be five 10, 9, 8, 7, so that makes sense. And then down here we have it on the 10 again. So 10, probably not very practical, but there it is. All right, let's 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 now go to the minor on this one, which let's do the A, which would be in the minor mode. Let's go to the minor mode and pick up the A. So now I'm gonna say, all right, let's do the fifth again. So the fifth will be right above it same rationale we'll do this quickly because they're the same relative position there's the fifth above it and then behind it we have the same relative position whoops over here back to the 12 up to the 12 it's a tough reach i could grab a g in the middle adding a seven kind of an interesting way to put it, seven but quite the reach I don't, okay anyways then the one right above it or the one on the same string is gonna be back here I'm on here, I'm going way back to this E. Okay. And then, uh, and then we know that the, the next one is gonna be the power chord. That's seven notes away. And then the next one is back here with a lean back chord which is the same, sh the third is now different, but the fifth is the same relative position. Now the third is here. And then we have this one where the E is up here again, which might be reachable, but probably not very practical. Okay. And then we could say, what about, what about the thirds? So if I go above it, the third's gonna be back here. If I didn't know where that was, I'd be saying, okay, I need to find a three note away minor third now. 12 minus three is nine. So I need to find a distance of nine, which means going from this to that would be a nine note away major six. How could I count that out? I'd say negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine is how I, I would count it. And so there we have that. So from this C to A would be a nine note away. Uh, notice when it was eight notes away, it would be here. If it was a major, it would be up one. To drop it back, it'd be nine. So boom, boom. Going from here to here is a three note away minor third. Okay. On the same string, it would be up here, which is three notes away that I can arp. Well, wait, let's go to this. Yeah. Same string. I can arpeggiate. That's three notes away. Clearly. Behind it is my lean back shape, which is going to be here. If it was a major, it would be right behind it, but a minor's back here. And then we're going to go, okay, and then the next one down, that's, by the way, five, five, uh, four, three. That makes sense. Next one's going to be down here. If I didn't know where that was, I'd say five, and then ten up to the kink in the tuning, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three way back to that C which I can't reach and then we have this one 
which would be here, which could be part of your lean forward uh, uh, D-shaped kind of chord. Could put your finger here too. So there it is, and it's the same as same relative position one as this one. All right, let's go to the next one down, and let's look at maybe this C. That's going to be back up to the major. Looking at the third and the fifth, let's look at the third first on this C. So if I go above it, looking for the third, I have a third back here. Count that by saying this would be negative five, six, seven, eight. Why? Because it's a four note away major third. 12 minus four is eight. So the distance from the top string to the bottom string, I'm looking for an eight note away minor six. So how could I count that up? It would be, it would be five, six, seven, eight. So dun, dun, so I can say the one above it is on this fret. But that would be that way, and that would be an eight note away minor uh, six, and from C to E, four note away major third. The next string up, I'm looking for eight notes away again, so it would be negative five. Whoops, that's not it be up here. Be negative 5, negative 10. I'm going 8 notes away, so I go to the right. 10, 9, 8. So that would be here. So if I went from this down, 8 note away, mi minor 9. From bottom up, 4 note away, major 3rd. And then the next one up, I, I can go, this would be negative 5, negative 10, negative 5. 15, I'm going to say 15 minus 12 is 3, 15 minus 12 is 3, and I need to get up to 8, 3, negative 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 would be back here. So it would be going from this C all the way to the open, which I wouldn't be able to reach if it wasn't an open thing. Alright, and then if I go down uh, below it, we have a third right underneath. Now, normally it's back here, but now because of the kink in the tuning, it's right underneath. Normally, it would be back here. So the, if I counted, this would be this would be five up to here, and then four back. And then if I go to the next one down, if I don't know where it is, well, it's going to be the same as the E that I looked at before here, because it's the same as the top string, which I can't really reach. All right, now let's do the fifths. So the fifth is gonna be right above it. It's a seven note away perfect fifth. So if we say, if I say 12 minus seven is five, I'm looking for a distance between this string and this string of five, which is right above it. So from the G to the C is a five note away perfect fourth. From C to G, seven note away perfect fifth. And then if I go to the next string up, it's over here. If I didn't know where that was, I would say negative five. I'm looking for, once again, a five note away distance. Negative five, negative 10. I need to get down to five. So I say 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. So here's, here it is out here, boom. the most price kind of a tough ridge and then the next one is going to be here which once again negative 5 10 9 ne wait negative 5 10 15 15 minus 12 is negative 3 and I need to get up to negative 5 so 3 4 5 would be here so we're gonna say from here to here <laughs> quite heavy. All right, uh, and then if I go to the G, if I go to this one, that's my power chord, but it's up a string because of the kink in the tuning, so that would be five here, six, seven, and then if I go down to this one, it would be five here, ten, get down to seven, nine, eight, seven. So that would be back here, so it looks like our normal shape behind for the fifth but it's shifted up a little bit. Ah, I think I got I think I have to stop. I'm kind of tired. Oh, okay.
Okay, I think I've, I've I'm worn out on that. What if I just noodle around a bit? I've been trying to stretch out of my shapes. Like if I so if I went if I went like like the thing that's been driving me crazy is that if I played like this shape, if I played like this shape from here to here, boom, 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 then I want to play it like this. But if I reach out here, which I can basically reach outside my shape, See, if I shift it up to here, then I would want to play it like this. But I could reach all of them and play all four fingers. So is it practical to play one note per finger, which I'm kind of thinking it is faster to do. But that kind of messes you up because then when I go back here, I want to play like this again. And then if I do it up here, and then the other thing is when I'm stretching like this way, between here and I go outside this shape to three notes, but they're distanced like that. Then, do I want to play this way? So I do this one with like my ring, which makes the pinky just too hard to reach. So I'm preferring now to go like this. Because it's easier to reach. So I think that's like I kind of like that, but then when I go back to do this, it throws me off. And then, like, if I do that, then it's possible for me to reach up to this one again, which means that I sh did I want to do one note per string, so I'd want to go. think that's the fastest way to do it so then so now I've got different fingerings depending on if I'm reaching up between just three frets between four frets three notes between five three frets three notes five frets and then between six frets four notes So that's what I'm kind of not sure if there's a preferred, like, what's the best way to deal with that? I'm starting to think. Because if I did that up here, it's way hard to reach, obviously, because now I'm up here.
Thank you. 